So I did a video last night on installing the windows and the windscreen, but as may happen when it's midnight and I'm working on a video, I sort of didn't really talk about the windscreen at all. And I had some video footage and some other stuff I could have mixed in, but that video was already like 16 minutes long. So I didn't add any more to it. So I think what I'll do is this will be a part two, and this will just talk about the windscreen. And I think I'll go back and edit the first video and just call it the windows, and then I'll call this one the windscreen. So the windscreen is challenging um, for a couple of reasons. One, the super curved nature. What you do here affects the other side. What you do here affects the top. So I'm not going to even begin to say that I'm an expert on this, um, but I'll tell you what I did. And in the end, I'm not happy with everything, you know, it being perfect. Um, I always strive for good quality, but this was a challenge. Um, so I mentioned in the other video that I spent six days working on all the windows, getting everything prepped and installed and dried and unwrapped and cleaned up. Um, probably the windshield I spent a full two days on, um, like a whole weekend last weekend. So you can also see I've done some repair. Um, when I was sanding, I hit... Uh, I hit, and so I put some super fill in here, which will, all I did was just knock the edge off. I, and then these are the rivets um, that hold the front top skin in place. So that needs a lot more work, but that was just a quickie, get it started. So, and I'll give you a teaser. This was today's project and it actually works. So that's kind of cool. Um, but uh, for the windscreen, what I did was I, I placed it in, in the area. I got it centered so that it overlapped on all sides and got it um, laid up where I was pretty happy with it being centered. And um, I marked some tick marks in the plastic and along here with some tape. I had put some tape down and put some lines on it from reference so that as I took it off and put it back on, I was going back into the exact same spot. So that was kind of important. So I did a tick mark like over here, one in the front and then one on the other side. And then the first thing I cut was this edge. So I marked it with fine line tape, lining it up with the joggle, um, the, the edge between here and where the joggle starts. I marked it with fine line tape and then I cut it, and then I put it in place. And then I, I started sanding it, and sanded it all the way around um, to get it fitted. And it's, <laughs> I, uh, I thought I was cutting it right on the line, but I really wasn't. Um, but I didn't wanna get too close until I cut back here. But I did get it so that the gapping was a little more even all the way around. Then I made this cut. Um, I used a, a Dremel cutoff wheel for all of the cuts and it, it cuts through it just fine. Um, what I did was a very careful light cut the first time um, just to kind of make a little track and uh, get the line going. And then I would go back and do the full plunge where I was cutting all the way through and then went, went through it. So that's, um, that's how I did that. Um, the sander, I, I showed the sanding um, wheel in another uh, video, the, the first video. I'll see if I can find it. I'll, I'll take some pictures and superimpose it. But it was a kit. Actually, I did the link in the other video as well. Um, it was like a uh, sanding disc for my drill. And that worked really, really well. Um, I ended up buying some uh, 40 and some 80, some packs of 40 grit and some 80 grit of the sanding discs um, because I was going through them and I probably could have stretched it, but the 40 when it's new was really fast. 
So I just kept changing them out. I only use the 80 just for a quick cleanup. And then uh, I actually, um, before I installed it, I, I had some just uh, 220. And uh, I, I actually put 220 on a, um, on a sanding board and just kind of just to clean up the edge and make it real smooth uh, before I installed it. So after I cut the, uh, you know, the back end here, then I really started the sanding. And what I did was I got the front part where I was happy and it was fitting just how I wanted into the, into the joggle here. And then I went back and cleaned up the back edge. Um, I don't know if that's the perfect way to do it, but that's the way I did it and it worked out. Um, I did a lot of sanding, uh, probably more than I should have because I was being so careful with it, but it turned out okay. The other thing I spent a lot of time on was trying to make the, uh, the primer line really clean. And I did some tips in the other video last night that I dropped this morning, uh, where I talked about using uh, 3M 218 fine line tape. It's a uh, basically a chemical resistant fine line tape that resists um, the 205 activator. Um, you're, uh, I don't know what's in the 205 activator. You're not supposed to use acetone on, on acrylics. Like this is Perspex, but it's acrylic. Um, it can damage it, make it dry it out, crack it, and make it hazy. Um, so the 205, it seems like it has some, um, some acetone in it, but I don't know. But it, it definitely made the first tape I bought just fall off. The second tape I bought, and I mentioned this in the other video, it, it did a little better, uh, but then the, the 218 tape is the best. That's definitely what I would recommend you buy uh, for getting your primer line. So, the, the and, and I also mentioned again, when you paint this, use gravity. So obviously this would be upside down. You're, you're priming the other side, um, but when you're priming it, let gravity pull the primer away from your tape um, because I had on um, the windshield was the first one I did and I had it laid down when I first started and, and the primer was getting under the tape, even with the good tape I was using uh, when I just had it laying down. So then I started tilting it up and I had much better success. And I mentioned the other video, I cleaned it up with just a little uh, Q-tip and a little MEK and that did great. Um, just from where I had a couple of runners where the primer got up underneath the tape. So this, this involves a lot of off and on and off and on. Um, I got lazy a few times and I would just pull it away and sand in place. Um, and towards the end, I think that's probably okay. But uh, for the bulk of it, it's probably better to, uh, to just take it off, to just, I had, I had tape here anyway for just um, along with all the edges just for protection. And uh, I would just put tick marks showing where I needed to sand and, uh, and then taking it away. I think you're less likely to uh, damage anything. Um, the other thing, someone on their blog mentioned this and uh, I, I think it's a great idea. Before you put this in place, when you're done with all your grinding and sanding and cutting, make sure you remove all the plastic, clean it, and make sure you don't have any cracks or damage before you glue it in place. Because um, I had it all taped up and everything, but I had read in someone's blog that you should do that, and I think that was great advice. So I took all my plastic off, and uh, you can, if you're careful and you take it off in pieces, you can kind of like flap it over and then clean and look, and then you can kind of stretch it back. This is what came from the factory, but it's, it's been off and on a couple times, but I'm leaving it in place just to protect it. I'm, uh, I'm clumsy, so, um, you know, who knows what I might run into and the plastic might help save it a little bit. So, um, as we, I'll, I'll insert a bunch of pictures and some video while I'm talking, uh, but, uh, the big thing is just prepare yourself for 
a lot of sanding. I mentioned again the other video, lots of dust. Um, <laughs> I, I did some rivets while I had my, my whole shop is I had filled these rivets, but I never sanded them down. And why my shop is just full of just the dust from the from this, I went ahead and sanded these down. That just added to the mix. But um, be prepared for the dust. Um, half sanding disc, lots of tape. Um, there's a couple of different primers. There's one for the Perspex and one for the fiberglass. Um, so just double check the, the manuals. Um, I believe it was, I don't want to say, just check the manuals. I'm trying to remember which one I use for which, but it's, uh, it's 206 and 209 D and then Sika 205 is the activator. And you can see all the dust is just static cling to this, uh, to the windscreen. Uh, 205 is the activator, and then the, the, the product you use for the adhesive is, is uh, Sika 295 UV. And uh, doing some reading on it, that is a very industry standard. Uh, it's been around forever. It's widely used in automotive and marine applications. It has a good reputation. So um, the big thing is you're just looking for that nice, clean line and uh, having the Sika look nice, um, that's, a, that's a bit of a challenge. Um, I've got cosmetic stuff I've got to do, but I'm trying to do broad strokes and not get bogged down into the cosmetics um, because you can really burn some hours. Um, so anyway, um, I'll, I'll insert some video here and there, and maybe at the end, now that I'm done talking, I'll just... Uh, show you some video of um, the windscreen installation. Um, my wife took some video, my daughter took some video, and then some video of me and my wife uh, laying it in place after we spread out the, uh, the Sika. So the caulk gun I have um, is terrible, and I couldn't find my better caulk gun. I would get a ratcheting caulk gun, or if you have an electric caulk gun, one of those... Uh, with a battery that, that you just pull a trigger, I would recommend it because the Sika is pretty thick. Um, I initially was putting multiple thin lines. I gave up on that. I cut the tip off and then just did one big line. And then I used a, a squeegee um, just to kind of spread it out. And then there's a video, it's about three years old on Facebook from Midwest Sky Sports. If you wanna go back and look at that, he talks about doing windshields and he's got some tips about the Sika and the windshields in general. You might, uh, you might go back and watch his video. Uh, it's Henry from uh, Midwest Sky Sports and he's, he, um, he actually took a squeegee and he, um, he cut uh, like lines in it, like you would have a trowel for a, if you're doing tiling to make the ridges. Um, I followed that advice and it just kind of helps you get it evenly distributed um, so that when you push it in, it sort of collapses your, your lines of, of the sealant and you get good coverage, I think. I mean, I've done some tiling in my day and, uh, you know, it makes sense to do it here as well. So I did that. I just took a squeegee um, that I got off Amazon and I just, with my cutoff wheel on my Dremel, I, uh, I made some cuts into it. Um, I don't think there's anything scientific about it. It's just so that you sort of have an even thickness all the way around and you don't have big globs in one place and not enough in another. So I think that was probably um, some other advice that I, that I saw. But uh, I'll insert some video and some pictures and feel free to comment and uh, let me know what you think. Again, I'm not an expert. Um, if you are, feel free to comment for the group and pass on your, your sage advice. Um, I don't think mine is going anywhere. Um, I got good squeeze out on the inside um, in here and there. Um, and then uh, I did mention in the video, I made these, the, the primer line, one quarter inch past where the joggle ends. I just thought it would help conceal any squeeze out and uh of course you're not looking at any of this anyway because this is like 
glare shield here is blocking this anyway. Um, but I thought it would just hide. Uh, it's mainly up here and on the other windows. Um, you know, it's just hiding if there's any squeeze out that I couldn't clean up nice right along here. I just, uh, I thought it being a little thicker would be good. So, uh, anyway, that's today's video. That's a lot of me rambling. Uh, hopefully that's helpful along with the pictures and the overlay and good luck with your project.